Hi there, I am back and today I'm going to just do um, a video describing my recent experience uh, dealing with some problems I've had with the Presto Flipside Waffle Maker. Um, some of you that have uh, tuned in to the video I did um, talking about how to steam clean it when you cook something in there and leaves a sticky residue that's hard to get off and you don't want to damage the plates. Um, so there, I left some comments there and there's a conversation there talking about how um, I've been having a really bad issue with um, everything sticking. Um, and I thought, well, maybe I need to re-season the waffle iron. And uh, so I did that and I ended up doing it several times and nothing seemed to help. It got to a point where no matter what I was cooking in here, um, I'd have to ruin three or four easily, uh, three or four waffles before I'd get one that would come out whole in one piece. It was really frustrating. And then I'd get to that point thinking, oh, good, maybe I reseasoned it now. So I'd make a second waffle. Nope. That one would tear to pieces. It would burn. I was chiseling it out with plastic, with dull plastic knives. And I just, it, it was a hair pulling experience. I was very disappointed. I thought, I don't know what I did to ruin it. I followed the instructions. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. I used spray oil. I used uh, regular cooking oil, vegetable oil with a brush or a paper towel or, or a or a dish rag, a clean dish rag. I couldn't figure out why it wasn't cooperating, even though I was giving it lots of oil. And that that in and of itself was frustrating because when you buy something non-stick, whether it be skillets, frying pan, saucepan, or a small appliance like this, you kind of go into it with the idea that, well, yeah, it's food isn't gonna stick, you know, or it's gonna need very little help in, in the way of oil, if any. Um, but it's also lower in calories if you're not having to put butter and oil and grease, you know, down on the pan first. And all of that sort of went out the window <laughs> when this started to misbehave and I couldn't figure out what was going on. So in a nutshell, here's my experience. Um, a little over two weeks ago, I went to the Presto website and I used their contact page to email them and describe the problem I was having, told them how disappointed I was with it. Uh, that I purchased it from Amazon, and that if it had been still within the 30-day window from my purchase date from Amazon, because you only get a 30-day return window with them, if it had still been under that parameter, I probably would have just given up, boxed it up, and sent it back for a refund. Well, I couldn't do that because it had been just over 60 days. So I was describing to Presto that this was frustrating. I was very disappointed. Um, I was contacting them as kind of a last-ditch effort. Is, can anything be done? Could you at least tell me what I'm doing wrong so I can fix it and go on using my waffle iron um, like I was before? Very happily, I might add. <laughs> it was a joy to use when it was working great. So um, I got an answer back. The, a response, I should say, the very next day from someone in their customer service department said, we really want to help you with this problem. Please provide us with your model number, the serial number, and all this stuff that's printed on the bottom of the base. Um, and also, we would love for you to email us a picture of the inside of the, of the grates of the, of the waffle iron. So I did all that. And... That was it. I didn't hear anything more after that. And like I said, two weeks went by and still nothing. And then I had to kind of decide how I wanted to approach this. I thought, all right, I, I reached out to them. They responded back pretty quickly. I sent them what they requested and now nothing. I mean, I, I had a hard time believing that I had a team of people all sitting around for two weeks going, what do we do? Uh, <laughs> it was more like it kind of got lost in the shuffle. Um, so um, so yesterday I thought, all right, I, I made the decision. I'm going to call them on my phone and see what's going on. And this is going to be my last attempt to see if they will do anything. I mean, they don't have to. I mean, when you look at your warranty for any anything you buy, um, 
Um, a lot of it is at the, if not all of it, is at the company's discretion. You know, they can decide whatever they want and if they even want to uh, help you with it. So, um, but Presto is, is a good company. So I wanted to give them a fair shake in this whole thing. So when I called them, I talked to a customer service rep and she was, she was very friendly. She was very helpful and very professional. Um, and so I told her what was going on and told her about the, the emails and she put me on hold and she was gone for a while because when she came back, she was very apologetic and said, I really had to search through, but I found the original email. I found the response you got. And, um, but it took a while to find your response with the, with the included photo, um, and all the pertinent numbers. And she said, the reason for that is it got, when you sent that back, it got forwarded to someone else. And that's kind of where um, she lost track of it. It just, it landed on someone else's um, desk, so to speak. And either it got forgotten about, or it, it got lost in the shuffle with a lot of other projects. She said, I don't really know. I don't know if that's true, but it doesn't really matter. Um, she said, she said, I don't know why it wasn't uh, acted on, or at least I don't know why somebody didn't contact you at that point to tell you what the next step was. So as long as we were on the phone, and we were on the phone for easily 20 to 30 minutes. So this, this kind of went on for a little while. So once she had all the information, we talked for a while, she actually wanted me to read her my uh, of all the recipes I use, she wanted me to read her the recipe of the waffle batter I use most often, which is that yeasted uh, batter that I talk about a lot on my channel. And um, she wanted to know how much flour I used and how much oil or butter, whatever the fat was I used, because she wanted to know what the ratio was. So she's like, okay, okay. And how much sugar's in there? I mean, it was it got kind of down to brass tacks on ingredients. And then she told me, she said, now what are you doing to prepare the iron? And I talked about, well, sometimes I would spray it. Sometimes I wouldn't spray anything at all. And everything was working great. Sometimes I, I brushed oil on and she wanted to know if I was using a brush or paper towel. I mean, it really got down to all the details. And my mind is just kind of going, well, is, is my getting this problem fixed hinging on whether I used a paper towel or a pastry brush or <laughs> what it was it I was just getting all this strange vibe so when it was all over she said well she said I'm gonna send you a new waffle iron don't worry about that but I'm gonna tell you one thing right up front with this particular model and this is one of the reasons I wanted to put this video out she said stop using or or when you get the new one don't do it at all don't use spray oil, she said, because a lot of them contain ingredients that make the oil cling to the surface more tightly, but that causes a gummy buildup over time. And because you can't wash this per se, you know, you can't put it in the sink and really scrub it down, uh, seeing that it's an electrical appliance and the plates aren't removable, um, it's harder over time. It's harder to get that off, even though mine clearly doesn't have a sticky buildup. It, it doesn't. I haven't owned it long enough for that to happen. And I don't use it every day. I don't even use it every week. So, but, you know, um, it, she couldn't figure out what was going on either. So she sent me a new waffle iron. But here's the thing. In order to get that new waffle iron, I, I, I had a few, a, a couple more hoops to jump through. Uh, one, the big one was she said, I'm going to send you a new one, but you're not going to get it until you send me another email. And she said, you have to have a picture included where you cut. I hope you can see that you cut the cord off at the base <laughs> right here. So that's and then the picture has to be of the base of the uh, of the waffle iron and the cut cord. And that's proof that this has been rendered unusable. Then you get your new waffle iron. Other, you know, and I could see their point. Otherwise, could I, you know, somebody might be scamming them out of getting a brand new and then you've got two, you know. So I see their point there, but it just seemed, you know, really weird to have to just completely <laughs> destroy this one in order to get a new one. Um, that's that's not entirely unheard of, but it's it's only the second time I've had to do that. The first time was for a... Um, 
a dehumidifier that was working fabulously. It's something I loved, but I got a letter in the mail one day saying that it was one of several models that was recalled because it could cause a house fire. So I had to cut the cord off and actually send the cord back to them as proof that it was rendered, you know, unusable. But um, so it, it is something that does happen on occasion. So now I have to deal with getting rid of it. And of course, you know, where is it going to go? It's probably going to end up in a landfill. So I'm, I'm hoping that I can get a few other things together that I could take to um, an electronics um, recycling place. I hope they take this kind of stuff instead of just computer equipment and TVs and whatnot. But anyway, I have my new waffle iron. Um, I haven't tested it yet. I just got it. The UPS guy just dropped it off this afternoon. So I was excited about that. I wasn't sure if I was going to get it by Saturday. Here it is Wednesday and I already have it. So I wanted to pass that on to you guys. Um, I am a little, I'm still a little kind of miffed that going through their website and going through emails, um, they just drop the ball. Um, and I have had that happen many times with other companies where you get this computer generated, this automatic generated response without a person on the other end saying, oh, someone will get back to you. Um, as soon as possible, and then nothing happens. Some companies, you're lucky to even get that. So I just wanted to pass it on that that if you do have any issues with any company, whether it be Presto or Oster or anything else, call. If you have an 800 number in that book, call the number first. Go through email as a last resort. But I do want to say that this issue has been cleared up. I've got my new iron. And like I said, I haven't tried it yet. When I do, I'll let you know and make sure that uh, that everything's a go. And if you have this waffle iron, stop using spray oil. Apparently, that's that's their recommendation. So I'm not going to do that. She even suggested using a very soft pastry brush or better yet, one of those silicone pastry brushes that has a really soft, flexible bristles and use that to apply the oil. So I'm hoping it's not for every single waffle I want to put in there. But I'm, I'm thinking, too, that this is no longer a waffle iron I can put fun things in, you know, like hamburgers and, and uh, stuff like that that's not your normal run-of-the-mill waffle, so, which that is kind of disappointing and a bummer. But um, it is what it is, but it's a great Belgian waffle maker as far as the big, thick, uh, crispy, and, and soft, fluffy waffles. It does a great job with those. So I will keep you posted as to how the new one is working. Um, and for now, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Sorry if I rambled on too long. <laughs> but again, if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and have a great day.